The objective within this lesson is to relate fraction and decimal equivalents to multiplying a fraction by 1. Here is 1. There are many different fractions that we can go ahead and write that would be equivalent to 1. Like 5 fifths, or 7 sevenths, or 3 thirds, or 4 fourths, or even 25 twenty fifths. All of those are equivalent or equal to 1. If I were to multiply a fraction by 1, of course I would still get that same fraction. Now the other thing that I can do though is I can express that 1 in other ways. For instance, with the 1 third times 1, I could express that 1 as 4 fourths if I wanted to, to be able to express this fraction into twelfths. How many twelfths would that equal? Right, four twelfths. So one third is equivalent to four twelfths. And what I'm doing is I am multiplying by one there. Now if I were to write this out here, two fifths times something, and I tell you that two fifths times that one there now is expressed as fifteenths. What numbers would you write within those other spots? Right, we would have to multiply the denominator by 3, and the numerator would also have a 3 in it. In other words, this 1 is also equal to 3 thirds, so that 2 fifths times 3 thirds does equal 6 fifteenths. Now for this final one, I'm going to show you this 9 fourths is a little bit different in that 9 fourths is bigger and larger than 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this into hundredths. And the way that I will get this into hundredths is by rewriting 9 fourths still. And then instead of multiplying by 1, I'm going to multiply by 25 over 25, which is also equal to 1. And remember, when I multiply by 1, I'm still going to get this 9 fourths and what 9 fourths is equivalent to. So I have 9 times 25 in the numerator here. 25 times 9, 5, regroup of 4, that's 225. So I have 225 hundredths. And our step forward from there is going to be to know that 100 hundredths is already equal to 1. So 200 hundredths is equal to 2. So 225 over 100 is equal to 2.25. And so that 9 fourths does equal 2.25. Those are That's a decimal equivalent. Here we have the instructions to express each fraction as an equivalent decimal. So let's take a look at that fraction 3 fourths. To express it as an equivalent decimal, I have to multiply it by 1, just as I was doing before. Except when I'm choosing that 1, what I can choose is to multiply by a fraction that is equivalent to 1 that will get my denominator into 10, 100, or 1,000. So I want to get tenths, hundredths, or thousandths so that it's easy to write my decimal equivalent. In this case, I know that 4 times 25 is 100, so I will choose 25 twenty-fifths, and then I can continue to do my work. 3 times 25 is 75, and 4 times 25 is 100. So I have 75 hundredths, which I can write as a decimal within standard form as 0 0.75. So I've expressed this fraction, which was 3 fourths, as a decimal. 3 fourths does equal 0 0.75, or 75 hundredths. Here's another fraction where we're asked to 
express it as a decimal. We'll rewrite it, 3 fifths times that version of 1 to be able to get to either tenths, hundreds, or thousandths. We can get to tenths by multiplying by 2 over 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 2 is 10. So we have 6 tenths, which we can write as a decimal as 0 0.6. Here are two problems for you to try. Go ahead and find the decimal equivalent for each. Show your work. The first one you could choose to multiply by 2 over 2, which would give you 8 over 10. That's 8 tenths, which is also equal to 0 0.8. For the second one, we can multiply by 5 over 5. 7 times 5 is 35. 20 times 5 is 100. So we have 35 hundredths, which is also written as 0 0.35. So those are the two decimal equivalents for 4 fifths and for 7 twentieths. We would like to make the decimal equivalent for this one as well. We have 31 twenty fifths. Hey, wait a second here. 31 twenty fifths is actually larger than 1. It is an improper fraction. Our procedure is still the same and that we're still looking for either tenths, hundreds, or thousandths. So what can we multiply by? Concentrate on the denominator here. 25 times what? Did you say 4? 25 times 4 would be 100. So we're going to be multiplying by 4 over 4, which is also equal to 1. So the value does not change. 31 times 4 is 124, and that's 124 over 100, or 124 hundredths, which is written 1.24 as a decimal. Let's try another problem. Let's go 92 fiftieths. What will we multiply by? Right. 2 in the denominator, and whatever we multiply in the denominator, let's multiply in the numerator as well. And by multiplying by 2 over 2, which is also equal to 1, our value of that fraction does not change. 92 times 2 is 184, and 50 times 2 is 100. So we have 184 hundredths, which is written as 1.84. Here I have the mixed number 2 and 9 twentieths. 2 and 9 twentieths is also equal to 2 plus 9 twentieths. So all it will need to do is to figure out what 9 twentieths is worth and then add it back to 2. 9 twentieths as a decimal, let's go ahead and write that out. That'd be 9 twentieths times 5 over 5 to be able to get to hundredths, and we're still adding that to 2. So we have 2 plus 45 over 100, which is equal to 2 plus 0 0.45, which is equal to 2.45. So we have 2 and 45 hundredths, which is equal to 2 and 9 twentieths. Here are two of them for you to try. You have 12 fifths is equal to, and... The other one is 3 and 17 fiftieths is equal to. Please write decimal equivalents for each while showing your work. Twelve fifths, you could have multiplied by 2 over 2 to be able to get 24 over 10. That's 24 tenths, which is also written as 2.4. 3 and 17 fiftieths can break it apart to get 3 plus 17 over 50. And then we'll take one more step there. We'll multiply by 2 over 2 to be able to get to hundredths. So we have 3 plus 34 hundredths, which is equal to 3 plus 0 0.34,
which is equal to 3.34, also read as 3 and 34 hundredths. So the big key is to be able to get either tenths, hundredths, or thousandths within those denominators. And what you're doing is you're multiplying by that fraction that is equivalent to 1 to be able to get these decimal equivalents. So we're relating these fractions with decimals.